Big Ten Hag has knocked Barcelona out of the Europa League and what a manager, what a genius. He's been in Xavi, he's been in Pep, he's been in Klopp, he's been in Arteta, he's been in Conte. His in-game management and all those games have won United the game. He is an absolute fantastic manager. It's the best manager we've had since Sir Alex Ferguson. It's the smartest manager and his mentality is insane. We're going to talk about what he said to Martins at halftime, what Robin Pambersi said on Ten Hag. Ten Hag said to the United players, you're not having a title parade for winning the Carabao Cup. You've got to win at least two trophies of a title parade. That is the mentality of this manager. He gave them the hair dry treatment at halftime versus Barcelona because they weren't good enough in the first half. He did the same versus Leicester at halftime. He is some manager. What he's done to this team, incorporated this winning personality into the team, the way he's getting them to play. Bear in mind, he's not had, you know, this is his first season, his first six months. He's still missing two or three key signings. We still are playing the game every three days. These players are knackered. We don't have the depth and he's still getting performances like this. Imagine what they'll get with investment. You know, imagine if they'd actually backed him in January, maybe Jao Felix was sort of out there cause just imagine. And in today's video, we're going to talk about five things we learned from Manchester United, five but not five, Manchester United 2, Barcelona 1, five things we learned from United knocking out Barcelona in the Champions League, but also going to touch upon news of Rashford's injury and some things that Martinez had said and Ten Hag had said as well. I want to quickly talk about a statistic that Manchester United have never lost a game where both Casemiro and Bruno have played, and hopefully that continues. We've got a big cup final on Sunday, Ten Hag said the players can have one beer, but no more, we've got a big cup final on Sunday, and reportedly Marcus Rashford is out injured for that. Hoping it's mind games, like a little trick or prank on Newcastle to make them think Rashford's out injured. Um, but it's believed that Rashford's going to be out injured for the cup final. We don't have any news on Rashford's injury, but Rashford posted a sad face and an injury face. And a sort of speculation that Rashford could be out for a couple of weeks. We'll have to wait for an update on that. But unfortunately, Rashford is injured. And I do think that's going to be a massive miss because... We aren't the same about Rashford in attack. Rashford's where the goals is coming from. Rashford's where the moments are coming from. So I'm really hoping that this is my games with <laughs> Newcastle. Because the last thing we want is a Rashford or Casemiro injury this season. Now, I want to talk about Ten Hag's mentality. Before I get into five things we learned from Manchester United 2, Barcelona 1, I want to get to Ten Hag's mentality. And the reason I want to do this is because Martin has said this. Um, he said this after the game. If I tell you what Ten Hag said during halftime, I could not say it on camera. He challenged us. He challenged us because we didn't look like a team. And what we've been doing in the first half, n not with energy or and of fight and not with fighting. Basically, he's saying that Ten Hag had a massive go with them at halftime. He gave them the hair dry treatment. He challenged them. He challenged why they aren't having the same energy as Barcelona. Why they're not fighting. Ten Hag was very angry. You know, what's wrong with the energy? Why are you losing the ball? Why haven't we got the energy? You know, we started the first 15 minutes versus Barcelona fantastically, fantastically, fantastically well those first 15 minutes. And then they had that dodgy penalty and then it just changed their momentum. And all of a sudden we couldn't get going. We couldn't pass. We couldn't move. The energy had gone. The fight had gone. The spirit had gone. It's like they just knew the ref was on Barca's side and the players psychologically had been wound up from that. And, you know... Martin has said, I can't tell you what Ten Hag said, I wouldn't be allowed to, which probably saying, he probably said, fuck, yeah, 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 probably ranted and swore at them, but he's saying, you know, he was proper challenging what they've done in the first half, and we know that he did the same versus Leicester, the difference between the first half and the second half versus Leicester, night and day, the difference between the first half and second half versus Barcelona, night and day, like, the absolute differences, the way we've come out in the second half like that, it just shows, like, how Ten Hag's an elite manager, he knows how to manage his players, he knows how to get through to his players, he knows how to get his players to step up, you know, it just shows the impact Ten Hag has, because two half-time team talks with Ten Hag, and they're a different team in the second half, it just shows how influential he is, how high his standards are, and what he's capable of doing, and the last two second halves, this halves that we've played, We've been absolutely fantastic. And this is a Barcelona side, just to give context. They haven't lost their last 18 games. They conceded seven goals in La Liga all season. You know, this is a Barcelona side that Man United have taken the only point, technically points off them, you know, if it wasn't a knockout game this season. So what Eric Ten Hag's done is absolutely incredible. <coughs> it was also said that Eric Ten Hag has dismissed the prospect of holding an open bus parade if his side win the Carabao Cup and will only consider... Um, sanctioning a mass celebration if they win two trophies this season just shows his mentality as well and Robin Van Persie spoke about Ten Hag and Robin Van Persie said on Ten Hag I was with him a couple of weeks ago and I was with him a few days ago he's in every morning at 7am and he leaves at 7pm he works on everything drills giving them confidence that is what players want to see and because Ten Hag is coming in at 7am and 7pm, the players see how hard he's working. And, and I think that almost motivates the players to want to work hard back. Because they see that this manager is working hard, this manager cares, this manager's given everything. Because he did things like when we lost 4-0 to Brentford, do the 14 kilometre run with them. 
because obviously he was like, it's my fault as well, I got my tactics wrong. The players can see that Ten Hag's in this together, Ten Hag's doing everything he can. So that might rub off from the players to go, I'm going to do everything I can. You know, we had a big problem last season with laziness and players not doing what they could. And the fact that Ten Hag is, is the polar opposite, working long hours. Reportedly, he got a window in his office so the players could see how long he's there and working. Reportedly, because he's working all these hours, it rubs off from the players to go, this is what we need to be if we want to be at the top. This is how hard we've got to work. And it's the man influence has had. And, you know, when Robin Van Persie was complimenting Ten Hag in the, in the interview, saying you've done a fantastic job because he has done a fantastic job, he didn't want to hear it. He said, enough uh, compliments, Robin. Uh, when we win trophies, that's we, that's why we're here. We have to improve. If that's our mindset, this is the dressing room. We will win trophies. He's saying, you know, enough with the compliments. Um, you can compliment me when we win trophies. He's so trophy obsessed. He's doing a good job, but he doesn't care that he's doing a good job. He needs trophies to prove he's doing a good job. He's not interested in his compliments, and that's the mentality. United in the past, if we'd finished third in another season like this, where we hadn't won a trophy, I feel like the mentality post Alex Ferguson is that's a good season. If you come in the top four, even if you don't win a trophy, that's been a good season for United since Alex Ferguson. And that's the, been the mentality of the club. OK, we'll finish in the top four. We won't win a trophy. That's a good season post Sir Alex. And Ted Long's like, no, if I finish in the top four, it's not a good season. Even though it is because we never thought we'd be finishing in the top four. Ted Long's like, no, that's, that's not a good season for me. You know, I am Ten Hag. I want, I want to go far. I need a trophy. Which just shows his mentality. So let's get into five things we learned from Manchester United 2, Barcelona 1. Five things we learned from the game. And number one is going to link with everything we've been saying. So I like my five things we learned to link with the content. Is that Ten Hag's in-game management is elite. Absolutely elite. Versus Leicester. Today he's made two substitutions at half-time. Yesterday, sorry. And they changed the game. Sancho coming on made the game better. Anthony coming on made the game better. So, like His in-game management's elite. The, you know, the Anthony sub changed the game, but also when we went to 1 all with Barcelona, he took Sancho off for Garnacho because he could see where we were causing Barcelona problems was kind of our pace in behind in the transitions. Who's very direct player, Garnacho? Who's good in the transitions, Garnacho? Who was fantastic that game? Alejandro Garnacho. He knew that when Greg Garnacho came on, he was causing them problems. You know, Garnacho could have got a goal, Garnacho could have got a sister, he was absolutely fantastic. And Ten Hag knew. All right, Delo needs to come on, Garnacho needs to come on because they're they're vulnerable in that transition. They're vulnerable in that final third. They're going to come at them. They're going to cause problems. And Ten Hag knew that, you know, as well. And his in-game management's been elite. You know, he took where course off was the right thing to do. The other week, he obviously brought Sancho on. He he just seems to get all his subs right. And then took Rashford off from McTominay as a precautionary. And hopefully the Rashford injury isn't too bad. The second thing we learned from Barcelona is the team has got that winner's mentality. Um, that win is mentality because Barcelona, this Barcelona defence has conceded seven goals in the Liga. It's a good team. It's a good defence. Yes, they didn't have Padre. Yes, they didn't have Gavi, but it's still a good team. But they've got that winner's mentality. And the reason I'm going to say that is to go from 1-0 behind at Barcelona then come out in the second half with that fight, that spirit, that determination. Ten Hag has brought in a winner's mentality to that Manchester United squad. And I absolutely love it. The fight, the spirit, the everything in that second half was absolutely fantastic. They, they, I do think you've got Varane, you've got Casemiro, you've got Martinez who have that clear winner's mentality in the squad, but it's rubbing off on everyone. They all fought to the death, they all fought together, they all wanted to win. How they came out in that second half absolutely proved it. They rose to the occasion. They are a team that fights. And Ten Hag's got back a team with Bet who didn't have that fighting spirit, a winner's personality, and now we do. Uh, the third thing we learned is Varane and Martinez. Wow, Varane and Martinez, but I generally feel like I'm watching Rio and Vidic all over again. I, you know, I generally never thought I'd say this, but this is our real and village replacement. It maybe took about ten, over 10 years, but wow. I mean, I think Varane is so underrated. I think Martinez is, is the dog. I think one thing Martinez did better than everyone was in the first half when Barca were pressing us. Martinez was our only defender that could really play out from the press, but Martinez and Varane together. Varane with those clearances. Varane and Martinez are arguably the two best players on the pitch. You know, the, the, the clearances they made, the tackles they made. Martinus was everywhere. Every time Barca had an attack, Martinus was there to sweep it up. He made blocks, he made interceptions, he made tackles in the box. He was there, he was winning headers. He was there, he's got the dog in him, he's got the fight in him. Martinus was incredible and so was Varane. Varane's used to these games, he's a big game player. He was obviously at Real Madrid, but Varane is again, it's there. He's making those clearances which could have made Barca 2-2 at the very death. I know they were offside, but... He was there as well. And those two players are incredible. And it just feels like we've got our real and Vidic. It's like we've got, we've got that centre-back pair and that we've been waiting so long for. You know, you know, we've had Phil Jones, we've had Maguire. And now we've got Varane and Martinez. It's like, fucking hell, it took so long. The fourth thing we learnt is that Anthony sub-changed the game. For me, the Ant and I know that links with the first thing. 
But Anthony was absolutely fantastic when he came. When he put in a defensive shift, he made a few good tackles. He brought the ball forward. What Anthony does, and I said this in my match reaction, is he holds the whip. He's very much a system player to Ten Hag. And against Barcelona, where were we causing the most damage? On the wings. Garnacho and Anthony, even Bruno got down that wing early when he was there. You know, that right-hand side and that left-hand side, That you know, if you went really wide, that was causing Barcelona damage to the width. And Ten Hag knew that and he brought Anthony on and he holds that width on his right-hand side. He, he was very lethal down the right-hand side. He got a goal, but he, he did create chances. He did make things happen. He did put in a defensive shift. And I thought Anthony was fantastic today. And I think people are slowly seeing the importance that Anthony brings to the team. He's not, you know, an individual player. He's very much a team player. And I think when Ten Hag gets the midfielder and a striker that he wants and, and you know, really completes his long-term rebuild and has the team that he wants, we'll see Anthony's role. Because when you watch him at Ajax, he was very good as a system player, linking up the play, one-twos, movements, positional sense. He's a very intellectual player, Anthony. And I think we'll see that once he builds a partnership with the United players, once he's got a striker that he's used to linking up with, holding the width, holding the space. I think we'll see that. And the fifth and final thing is Fred. Uh, 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 like Fred, man. Generally, Fred found his passport half time. Fred found his Brazilian passport half time. This is like this is like the fifth or sixth game of the season where Fred has put in a stinker in the first half and thinking, "Get off! You've been awful." Brings her bits on, to then put in an absolute masterclass in the second half. Fred in the final third this season has been excellent. He's got a goal and assist in the last three games in a row. He's excellent in the final third, and Casemiro obviously allows him to get into the final third. But he's so hit and miss, you just don't know what you're going to get with Fred. But he's been absolutely unreal this season, Fred. Absolutely unreal. He made 13 tackles. He had De Jong in his pocket. Even, even Ten Hag said that Fred was basically biting De Jong all game. I mean, De Jong had Fred in his freaking pocket. Fred was chasing him. Fred was a madman. And hopefully Frankie De Jong will see that and go, fuck, I picked the wrong club. Because of madness. Anyway, let me know anything you've missed out in the five things we learned. That's my five things we learned and chit chat about Ten Hag, the mentality, and more at United. Smash the like, smash the subscribe. I'll be live 6 30 pm tonight. We're going to talk about the game 6 30 pm tonight. So make sure you join my live stream and chat about that with me. See you then. Bye.